Hello, this video is about light boxes. I decided to make some light boxes for green screen filming and they are rather expensive to buy. So this is just made up of scrap and a few stick on white LEDs. Well, 485 of them to be precise, but it gives a nice white light, which is good for filming. And the second part of the video what I've done is I've taken an otherwise scrap television set and I've removed the LCD panel off the front, leaving the LED white behind it, therefore making another light box. Like so. It's a bit blue, but it is bright and I might be able to correct that with a few filters and things. But uh, that was a reasonably simple task and that was destined for the bin. So enjoy watching. Hello, I've been looking online at some lighting for video production and it is a little bit expensive so I thought I'm going to make my own. Now I found this piece of metal aluminium extrusion I think and I believe it must have been a display at some time because I've even got the ends for it here and just for a little sort of bit of lighting I'm going to use some of these white LED stick on lights, five meters a piece. There's two types here. There's a bright white and a sort of warm white as well. So I'm just gonna stick them in here row after row and maybe put some sort of diffuser over the top and see if I can make a, a decent little video light. So let's get started. Now what you find on these LED lights, actually I'll turn it off because the, the camera can't see too well. There are scissor marks or cut marks and you can safely cut these with a pair of scissors at those points where you see the scissors. And as long as you reconnect your positive and negative to the next strip and the next strip and the next strip, I should be able to easily set up a good row of these warm white and cold white and just stick them all down into this piece of metal here. So all I'm doing here is sticking these directly down onto this metal plate and this is the cold white and this is the warm white. So I'm just putting them alternatively cold warm cold warm cold warm all the way along there until I fill this entire channel up and then solder them all together and let's see you know, if it's actually any use or if I've just wasted all these LEDs. So to make it a little bit easier, I'm just using a piece of bare wire and I'm doing all the neutrals down one side and all the positives at the other side. And just do this little kind of zigzag fashion or interweaving fashion rather. I found a 12 volt power supply here and I don't know if that's going to be enough to power all these LEDs. There's 486 LEDs on here. Uh, so I'm not sure. Let's see what happens. Ah. Now this is a switch mode power supply and it obviously hasn't got enough power to power this and it's switching off. So I need something with a little bit more amperage. Okay, this has got uh, a bit more power to it. 12 volts, three amps. So let's see what this is going to look like now. Ah, there's one strip out. I found the problem. Some of the strips have bits of solder on them for some strange reason. And just here, the positive comes in, but it doesn't travel any further than there. So these need re-soldering here. There's obviously a break there. So just a little dab of solder and we'll try it again. Oh, beautiful. Look at that. Plenty of light. Next job now is to make a connector. And the end pieces have got these little holes in and the connector just fits but falls through. 
So I'm going to do a little bit of gluing on that and make that fit nicely. And then I can just plug the power supply in and switch the thing on. Right, here's the almost finished product. It probably looks terrible on the camera because the light's shining directly at it. I've used a bit of diffuser to put inside here. Unfortunately, I didn't have a piece long enough, so I've got to join two bits together here with a bit of sellotape maybe. But uh, the sort of light this is giving off, I'm going to shine it on the desk. Yeah, it's quite nice, actually. Oh, well, that's light box number one of two. And uh, it's nice and thin, and I'm going to use this, hopefully, to try and make my videos a little bit better. And there you go. What you can do with a few leftover LEDs. Uh, looks much better with the white behind it there to diffuse the lighting. Does it maybe look nice and bright now? Because I was never very bright at school. Anyway, this is uh, project number one of the two light boxes. The next one I'm going to do is take apart an L LED television and strip all the LCD off the front of it to see if I can make a decent light box out of that as well. So, on to the next part. Hello, today I'm going to try and turn this LED television into an LED light panel for using for filming and things. The LED light panels are still quite expensive at the moment. It's all gouged along the front here. There's plenty of scratches all over the place. And every now and again, I get a black line coming up this side here and that's just switching off a whole bank of uh, TFTs, uh, thin film transistors. And even though that can be repaired, sometimes it's just a loose connection. You've, you've got sort of little ribbon connectors along the edge and they loosen up as they heat up. I've been filming this a couple of times now and it hasn't happened for some strange reason. I wanted it to show up on the camera but it isn't going to. Anyway, uh, my original idea was to put all the colours of a, a plain photo of green and a plain, plain photo of blue and things and then just be able to select through the different pictures on a USB stick on the back. And I thought that would be a great idea because I could just set this up and think, oh, I need a little bit of a blue light or a bit of soft red light or something. Unfortunately, it looks nice and bright when you're looking at it. But the light that it actually gives off is not that useful. It's uh, not very bright. So I kind of decided, oh, what the hell, I'll take it apart for a video and turn it into a white LED panel. Here's the TV. This is a, a Bush TV. And uh, it's proving to be a little bit awkward to get open because it's got those usual little plastic tags everywhere even though you take all the screws out you've still got to prise it apart i'm not bothered if i damage it slightly because as i say i'm going to destroy the tv part of it anyway so i'll just disconnect the mains here and then we can take this back off one thing you've got to be really careful of even though this is disconnected from the mains. I've switched it off. It's been switched off for 10, 15 minutes now. These capacitors are still going to hold a fairly big charge for quite a while. And you'll, you'll still get a nasty shock off this, even, even hours after it's been switched off. So always be careful around here, especially of these capacitors. What we want to do is take the TV part off and then fire it up and flip it over and see if it still lights the LEDs. It probably won't because the this will be the power for the LEDs here and this will be the signal for the LCD, the TFT uh, that makes the pictures and this will be for the lighting. Now what will happen is this will control the LEDs and tell it when to switch them on and off and might even adjust the brightness as well, I'm not too sure. So if we disconnect this, the signal is not, not going to come up here to turn on the LEDs and we're going to have to try and trick it to do that. 
I'm just assuming mine. I mean, I don't know for sure, but I'm guessing that is obviously how this is going to work. So I'm going to disconnect the actual TV part of this by lifting up all these connectors. And then we'll start stripping the whole thing apart. And this is obviously all the, the power. So we'll take that off as well. This is the entire huh, television. So there you go. It's got a digital tuner and it's got uh, a HDMI input and a computer input your antenna and digital audio and a good old fashioned Scott. I'm surprised the only controls on this television set is this one button, which you can select left and right and then just push it in. And that's the entire controls. There's no buttons on the front of this. So if you haven't got the remote control, you're kind of stuck really because you can't access much of the TV's settings with just that button there. I use my uh, mobile phone to do most of the controlling but I haven't even got the remote for this but anyway take that off throw it to one side and whatever that is and I'm going to connect the power again the mains and then flip it over and see if it actually lights up the LEDs I don't think it will but we'll have a go so now we've just got the the panel the TFT and I can see that the LEDs are not lit. So what I'm going to do here is just check that it's actually giving some power out to what I assume is the power for the LEDs, which is going to be these. So if I just choose one of them and one of them, yeah, 20 volts. 22 volts. So the power is there for the LEDs, but obviously this blue wire or this red wire that's running along here is going to be a sort of a signal wire to turn on. And we'll figure that out in a moment. So there's your power. But remember, this is still holding a charge. Uh, quite a nasty charge. I have had a shock off these before and it's uh, it's not funny. So how do we get this apart then? As you can see here the damage is it's quite a, a groove that's cut into that and it's no good as a TV no more, not really. So it's just four screws and I've disconnected the power supply and we'll put that to one side and now we've got another layer of metal to get through. Lots of tiny, tiny little screws everywhere. So bear with me. So this is all your controller for the LCD panel here. Now these little connectors here are connecting the LCD on the front and a strip keeps appearing and disappearing on the screen. So what you would do is you would try and re-stick this down because obviously somewhere it's just getting loose and it's turning off an entire bank of uh, LCD strips. There you go, that's the next section. That was a bit awkward to get off, but it's off. And now that gets us to the actual glass LCD panel. And this is the piece we want to get rid of. So I'm gonna fold that over and Somehow, oh, I can't really be bothered too much. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull it away from its connectors here. This is the part I want to keep with the LEDs. I don't know exactly where they are. Probably down this bottom end somewhere. And I need this board as well because this board will have a bit of the control on it for the LEDs. So, so this section here is for the LEDs. This is the controller for the LEDs and this is where the cable comes in. And looking just here there's one 
little device and that says status and on off. So I'm guessing where this red and blue is, we might need to put a small voltage in there to actually trick this into turning its LEDs on because the power is there, but it's not switching on the LEDs unless we give it a little signal to say, yeah, light up, go ahead. So we'll figure that one out in a moment. Now the biggest problem in trying to trick one of these LCD monitors is to trick it that it needs to light up its LEDs. And what I found fiddling around is there's two wires here and they're basically a sort of a signal and it would normally send a pulse width through one of these cables into this circuitry and that in turn tells the chip to turn on the LEDs. Now because we've taken away all the TV part of it that circuitry is on that big circuit. However with a bit of fiddling about and an oscilloscope I found a point on the circuit board here that already has a signal that jumps up and down, uh, a pulse if you wish. So using me as a resistor, uh, don't try this at home unless you know what you're doing. If I uh, use a, a metal screwdriver and I hold these wires here and I touch at the right point, what will happen is that uh, 20 volt signal, which is going up and down rapidly, will go through me and then back to these wires and then back into the circuit again telling the chip to turn on the LEDs at a specific brightness or frequency or whatever. So if I just demonstrate this and I touch this little point here, as you can see, the LEDs come on. Because I've tricked the chip into thinking that that signal is coming from the original board that had the TV on it. But we're not using that now. So what I'm going to do now is actually solder a small variable resistor between that point and these two wires here. I've decided not to bother with the resistor. The variable resistor does the trick anyway so I've just taped it down here and that way I can get in and trim it if I need to in the future. But that's stuck down there now. Uh, so it's just a case of putting all this back together again and seeing if it works again of course. Well we know it lights up but stick it all back into its case and see how good it is as a light hopefully. I've put the back cover back on and taken out all the extra weight that obviously doesn't need to be in this anymore. The TV, the speakers, the remote control and I've also put a vase mount on the back. I think it's a visa mount or vase mount, not too sure. Uh, so I can, well, get it up off the, off the ground because there's nothing for it to stand on. There wasn't any stand with this TV. Right, if I flip this over now, hopefully, I'll put it to one angle. Hopefully, power up. Oh, there you go. Another light. Right, I'm going to put that up on its mount now and see how effective it's going to be. Right, now it's completed. I've put the monitor up on a shelf up there and uh, this is me without this extra light. And if I switch on the monitor, the TV monitor light, this is the extra light I'm getting. So that's, uh, I guess it's a bit of a cold light that is, but the long strip light that I've made with the 485 white LEDs, let me turn that one on as well, that's a, a different sort of temperature of light and it's quite a bit whiter. So we've got a, a bluish light, cold, and a neutral white light. And altogether, that does produce a lot more light from something that would have ended up in the bin. So that's the result. If you've found anything useful here please give us a thumbs up and thanks very much for watching. All the best.